Dan Perry here, and this is part 31 of our TCP IP basics. We're going to introduce you to Wireshark. <clears throat> and, of course, the objective is to give you that introduction to Wireshark so that as we use Wireshark in future videos uh, to demonstrate how a number of the application layer, layer protocols work, you'll know what Wireshark is. What is Wireshark? Well, it's a network monitoring tool. Uh, it allows us to capture traffic uh, on our network, and then it functions as a protocol analyzer. We can ta take that traffic we captured, we can then save that traffic, uh, analyze it, look at it, see what types of traffic. Uh, we've got a lot of detail we can use to analyze what's going on on our network. <laughs> It is an open source package. It uh, multi-platform, so not only is it free, but it runs on Macs, Windows, Linux computers, um, and it again it allows us to do that uh, capture and examination of our network traffic, uh, so that we can really get a good picture of what's going on on our network. We'll be using it in this series to see what happens with the different uh, application layer protocols and some network layer protocols, see how they work and the details of how those different layers work. Now, <clears throat> Wireshark, as we said, we capture our network traffic, we examine the data, we analyze the data. We can also, if we have other sources, other tools for capturing uh, data, network data, we can use the uh, Wireshark for that as well. What you see here is the uh, Wireshark screen of the current version which is uh, 1.6.8 uh, and I have opened it full screen so when you start Wireshark this is what you'll see. Um, later versions or earlier versions these screens uh, look a little bit different. Uh, it's got a uh, capture section on the screen it's got a capture help. We can open existing files that we've captured. And then there's some online help and security. Uh, with the interface list or the capture section, we've got a list of the different network cards that happen to be in our system. You will probably see different ones. Uh, we can also go up to the capture menu and pick interface and get our interface list, uh, as well as options. Uh, I'm going to click on the capture options, which would be the same as going up to our uh, menu and do options. And when I do, it opens up an option screen that lets me make some decisions on what I'm going to capture. For one, I can pick which device I'm capturing to. I'm going to capture to my Ethernet controller, uh, how I want to capture. Uh, one of those things says capture packets in promiscuous mode. This says, do I, if it, this is checked, it will capture any traffic that the network adapter sees. If you turn that off, it will only capture traffic to and from your network adapter, adapter and it will ignore, ignore anything else. Uh, we can change the format to the next generation format if we want to capture uh, uh, IPv6 stuff. <clears throat> We can control the size of the capture. If we're going to capture data for a long period of time, we've got some areas, uh, an area down here for splitting it up into multiple files. Uh, we can choose how it captures. Uh, we can start it and have it stop after a certain amount of time or data that it's captured. So I can start it and leave it and come back later. I'm just going to accept the defaults here. Uh, and since I've chosen my network uh, adapter, when I click start, it begins capturing. And what I see up in the tops of the screen are the data, the traffic that's being captured. Here in the second, whatever uh, highlighted packet, it will show the details on. And then down in the bottom of the screen, it actually shows the uh, information on that packet that's captured in its uh, hexadecimal form here on the left, and it shows if there's a printable ASCII characters on the right part, part of it. And you can see at this point I have captured a number of uh, 
frames as they've gone across. So I'm going to cut, just come up here in the capture and I'm going to tell it stop. I could also do a control E to stop it. And now I'm ready to do my analysis. So if I want to an analyze traffic, I can look through. We'll just do some simple things. Look through here. I can scroll, see it. It color codes different kinds of traffic. So for in my case, for example, this HTTP traffic is either green or black. Here's TCP traffic in green, UDP traffic in blue, um, ARP in what looks like a gray, <clears throat> um, some gr yellow, and a number of different color coding on the traffic. This can help you pick the traffic. If I just want to look at uh, something I can click on that frame um, and when I click on it the bottom of my screen shows or the middle of my screen I should say shows the details of that frame I'm gonna drag this down and I can click and open it up the first part frame information uh, just is a summary of the frame it's not the actual data it's just a summary um, it says frame 109 that just says in this case that's the 109th frame that was captured <coughs> how often between frames and the size the actual frame itself this was since this was an ARP uh, here is my Ethernet frame information source and destination uh, and I can expand that out the actual data was what's in parentheses here the uh, Netgear here says hey this ha this happened to be a Netgear ad adapter uh, if I click down a source, I can again look at the details of it. Since this is an ARP or network layer protocol, I can expand that and see what's there. This happened to be a uh, ARP request, and there's the data. We'll be talking about the details of those different frames later. Uh, if I just come up here and find something else, uh, uh, I know I saw an HTTP somewhere. Uh, well, here's yeah here here's a TCP that's HTTP. You can see the details change. I've still got my Ethernet, but instead of uh, the network layer here, I've got my IP information, my transmission layer information, TCP information, and if there was any data on this, there would be the data. So I can again look at the details, and it puts it in a form that's easily human readable. Uh, I have a number of other things I can do. I've got the ability to do some analysis of it, uh, follow a stream or a conversation. I can filter out by conversations. Uh, statistics, I can get some summary information. Again, conversations. I can get a list of conversations based on a number of different things, such as if I just want to see the TCP uh, conversations, I can look at those. Uh, if I'm in one of those, and I can right-click here, and I can actually filter that conversation. So that's all I see here is that particular. That lets me go in, pull out a lot of the stuff that I don't need. When I did the filter, here in this filter area, it puts the code for the filter, or the expression for that filter, and if I know how to do it, instead of going through there or other ways, I can actually type these filters in. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and clear that, and now I'll see everything. Um, <clears throat> again, a number of things there that I can look at under statistics. Um, and the, again, there are a number of tools that I've got. And this introduction is not designed for us to uh, become experts. We'll see several of these tools as we go in, in, in uh, future videos. Next time, we'll look at the IP config utility.